Growing a bigger business will just create more stress and hassle. Now, unfortunately, lots of business owners have this mindset and it's costing them big time. Tune into this episode where we discuss the flaws in this thinking and how the way to true financial and lifestyle freedom comes from growing a great business. Well, we're talking about how sometimes it can be really frightening to grow. You're like, I cannot see how I could cope with more. Well, I can't rely on other people to do it the way I'd like it done. It's either that or they're thinking, no, I'm happy here, which is a nice little lie to tell yourself. Small business, small mind, but you could have been this other person. That to me is hell. Or maybe you've even seen the train wreck of other people which have grown too fast and then fallen on their face. Yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake. They were too big for their boots. What we're touching on there is really growth uh, done badly versus growth done well. Heaven forbid you went down. Could this business carry on? And if it can't, you need to grow. You have to grow. Freedom is taking six months off where your business can grow without you. That's freedom. And even better, you come back and people are like, oh, were you gone? And that's what growing a business gives you when it's done right. So should we talk about how to do this? Well, welcome to the podcast. Tony Fraser jones here, the host with my other host, Phil Smith. How you going, buddy? Yeah, good. Always good. Good, Very man. Well. What are we into today, Chief? Well, we're talking about how sometimes it can be really frightening to grow, uh, especially, you know, as you're you're getting bigger and things are getting busier and, and it can all actually make you feel a little bit worried. So, you know, maybe you think you have enough already uh, and you can just keep plodding on or maybe tread water at your current stage. Uh, or maybe you've even seen the train wreck of other people which have grown too fast and then fallen on their face. And so it can be a pretty scary thing to, to It's grow. like, yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake. They were too big for their boots and they, they went too hard and, ooh, it kind of serves them right. But the thing is, uh, staying still, you know, is that the way to go as well? Like, will that actually help me achieve my goals? So it's, it's kind of tricky, pulled in a bunch of directions. And uh, maybe my goals are a little bit too small. You know, are your goals too small? Have you got a little bit uh, gun shy, a little bit scared about shooting high because you're just not sure that it'll work? Uh, and uh, there's no doubt that growth done the wrong way is really stressful, uh, and it does cause a bunch of issues. And there are a lot of people who do come unstuck and trip up uh, when they grow too fast and not in the right way. But you know, when it's done the right way, it is a really different story. I, I think not growing because you don't know how or you're scared to do is not really the answer. The, the key question to, to figure out is how to do it successfully because if you look around, there are lots of businesses that are very successful uh, and they make good money and they have a great lifestyle and they have time and they have fun. Uh, and so it can be done. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure we got a story to kick off. We do. The story about uh, fishing, I love fishing. Uh, well, there was a man who was fishing, he's pulling these beautiful fish, and he saw this guy come along watching him fish, and uh, he was kind of a suit and tie guy, and he's like, oh, what have you been doing? I've been fishing. And he's like, man, you got a lot of fish there. And he's like, have you ever thought of like selling those fish? And he's like, well, I suppose I could. Uh, and then, look, if you sold them, you'd probably sell heaps of them, and then uh, you can employ some people. And the guy says, well, what would happen then? Or well, you'd probably build a factory, uh, and uh, you could hire, you know, buy some more boats and, and uh, you know, get more fish. And the guy's like, well, what happened then? Well, you get a management team in to, uh, you know, look after this business. And the guys, well, what would happen then? Well, you could, you know, you could uh, spend your money and invest your money. And the guys, well, what would happen then? He said, well, what would you like to do? And you know, he said, what would you do if you had all the time and the money you wanted? He said, well, I'd probably go fishing. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously the learning that I think a lot of the time people take from that story is is that hey, you don't need to grow, you know, especially if you're already doing what you love. You know, all of the growth and all of the hassle and all of the difficulty that comes with that is a lot of pain only to get right back to what you're doing right now. You know, maybe for you, you're sitting on a digger currently and you're busting your ass on this digger, and you know, if you if you work hard enough, you can finally get off the digger. And then what 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 would you do when you get all the freedom? Well, I'd go sit on a digger. Oh, I'd love to be on the digger. Thing is, that story's flawed, man. Yeah, it's kind of bollocks, right? Yeah, it's absolute bullshit. Like if you're listening to that story and thinking, oh, I get it, I don't have to grow. No, you're wrong. There's a big difference. The thing is, is that when the fisherman was first sitting there and he was fishing, you know, we think it's out of pleasure, but no, he needed to fish. He was, you know, feeding his family. He was, you know, making sure that he had a bare amount of fish to take to the market and sell. That was probably all he had and he was just scraping by. And so the thing is, he had to fish. Whereas if he builds the business up and gets to a point where it's, you know, true money, time and freedom... Well, then he can actually enjoy fishing, and it doesn't matter if he catches anything, and it doesn't matter if it's raining and he doesn't want to go out, cool, don't go out. Whereas at the start, before he built the business to a point that creates the time, money, and freedom, uh, he has to go out every day, whether he wants to or not, and it becomes a bloody chore. So it's not the same thing, uh, and that story is wrong. So if you've heard that anywhere, <laughs> understand that this is not actually a cautionary tale against growth. 
uh, the growth is actually a very beneficial thing if done right. Well, it's, it's a half story if you only hear the first half, right? That's right, that's like right. Like any half truth, it's uh, it's uh, potentially very dangerous. Yeah, and I think if we buy into that belief of, uh, you know, growth is scary or growth is bad. Or I don't want to grow because it's going to go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Any of that is going to gonna really run us into some issues. I think the first thing is you do end up running kind of scared. You, like, play small uh, and you think small and uh, you stay small. And you never are in a position to achieve financial independence. You always uh, have a job. It's always more of a, a hand-to-mouth, day-to-day, week-to-week existence. Uh, and that is not going to allow you to create true lifestyle freedom because you're always on the grind. Because you have to be to, to actually feed the family with the fish, as it were. Uh, and that might be fine for a little while. And often with people who are thinking, oh, I don't want to grow because it's too frightening, it's too scary, and, and they may not think about it like that, but that's probably the underneath sort of emotion that's well, going on. it's either on. that or they're thinking, no, I'm happy here, which is which is a nice little lie to tell yourself. And you can be happy here for a time. Yeah. That's the thing. But time shifts, and what will happen is if you stay in that position, it won't end up being that position because things will move, and you'll find that your life and your business is full of a bunch of stalled hopes and dreams. Yeah. Uh, as other people push forward, and you'll start to get frustrated. And uh, eventually you don't realize your potential, which is... um. Yeah, that's a really tough place to be, and that causes a lot of frustration with people as they as they get older. 100%. Well, shall we pull apart some of the common thoughts that sit behind this? Yeah, so there are some really interesting attitudes that sit behind this not wanting to grow. I guess the first thing is that uh, it's very easy to focus on those people who fail. And we, you know, news should not be called news. It should be called the bad news because pretty much all news is bad news. You very very seldom see good news stories. Uh, and it's the same. We, we're attracted to the train wrecks. You know, if you drive past an accident, we all rub in it. I don't know what it is. We just can't help it. It's the same in business. If we see someone who's failed or crashed and burned or a high-profile high person uh, in our in our town or our county or our state or whatever who's blown up, we're like, yeah, told you so. Like, idiots, what were they doing? They got too big for their boots. They didn't pay attention. Growth is bad. You know, and we, we really buy into that. We're like, oh, that's a that's a cautionary tale. We shouldn't go there. So that's the first thing. We've seen it happen to someone, and therefore we assume that's the way everything is. The, the next thing is more of a, a sort of a micro level. You know, you might be busy with a couple of people in your team. Uh, maybe you've got four or five people, six or seven, whatever it is, and you're like so busy that you're like, I cannot see how I could cope with more. Like I am tapped out. I am stressed to the max. I am helping out in the field. I am pricing work. I'm organizing jobs. I'm talking to the merchants and the suppliers. I'm talking to the clients. I'm repricing work. Uh, I'm dealing with the bank. I'm paying taxes. I'm taking phone calls, all of that stuff. And you're like, I literally cannot do any more. If I do any more, I will explode. I cannot cope. And so the thought of more, well, I can't rely on other people to do it the way I'd like it done. And I have to be across everything to make sure it's right. And how in the heck am I going to be across any more than I'm across now? There's no way. Look, if we had 20 people working in our business, there's no way I could be across all the work they're doing. How could I check all the jobs? How could I be across all the clients and all the projects? There's no way I can. So this this just can't work. Flip side of that is big businesses, they don't care. This is an attitude a lot of people have. If you're really honest, they're like, Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think like uh, one of the big things we do see come through is, is that that belief. And like I said, I think it's it's more of a, a an excuse we tell ourselves. And hey, we totally believe it. Don't get me wrong. We hundred percent believe it. That's the problem. But the problem is, is that people often tell themselves, uh, you know, I have enough, or I'm making enough. I'm happy with my profit level. I'm happy with you know the amount of time I've got. I'm happy with the way that my business is going. And I think like that's all really cool. But that's all about you. And unfortunately, like you are not the only stakeholder in this equation. And so, you know, there's a there's a hard truth in, in business, which is the minute you have more than one team member, you have two choices. You can grow forever or you can shrink back down to just being yourself. And I know that that's a frightening thing sometimes, but really those are the options. Because the minute you have more than one team member, the thing is, is that your team members, they want development, they want growth for themselves, they want to improve their lot in life. And you know, somewhere along the line, what's going to happen is you'll take on more team members, which you know creates more opportunity for the team because eventually you need management, and then you get an ops manager, which makes things a little bit easier, and you stop being so scared of hiring more tradesmen because you know now you got help with the management. But now that manager wants growth and development, so now you get more tradesmen, and then at that point you need estimators, and you need all these people coming in, you need offer stuff, you need new jobs, new opportunities, and it's all these people now are relying on you to provide brightness of future in their lives. 
And if the business stops growing, they stop having opportunity for their growth. And then so inevitably what happens is they will leave if they don't have you know growth opportunities. And that just pulls you straight back down to somewhere chaotic. So you know somewhere along your growth journey, you're going to get this feeling where you're like, this is enough. You know, I'm, I'm happy with this. But if you try to stop, then it won't be enough for some of the people in the team. Eventually they will leave. And then you slide backwards from where you are. And at that point, you get pulled straight back into the chaos. Your, you know, your work-life balance you were happy with is no longer in balance. The profitability you were happy with is no longer achievable because you have less operational power to actually you know, hit those numbers. So then you have to rebuild again. And so you're actually constantly sliding back and then having to push forward. It's like a train. It's going one way or the other, but it cannot be stationary. And so that scares a lot of people because then they think, well, you know, where do I stop? You know, like, I, I, what if I don't want to grow up forever? And, and the answer is if you grow up big enough, you don't have to grow it anymore. Other people grow up for you. Uh, and again, you can get off that train whenever you want. But the minute you have more than a few staff, that train moving one way or the other. Uh, and if you ever do genuinely get to a point where you don't want to be on it anymore, uh, it has a life of its own. It has its own needs. And you have a responsibility to let someone else um, drive that train, drive the train from now on. Uh, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you sell. It just means that you step down from you know the management of the business. You know, a lot of a lot of people when they grow really really big companies, they might be the founder. It doesn't mean that they're the current CEO as it gets big. So that you have lots of options. And I think again, like like we said, nothing stands still in life. So your business doesn't, but also like your life doesn't. You know, your family changes. You you need more time because your kids are coming through, or they're getting older, or they have more needs from you. Or maybe you're just getting older yourself. Your energy goes down. I mean, reality is, you know, do you remember how it felt 10 years ago? Did you have more energy? I bet you did. Uh, and the thing is, is that that phenomenon carries on uh, throughout your whole life. So eventually you can't do what you were doing before. And so you need things to change. Plus there's inflation, you know, there's clients that come and go, team members that come and go. Everything in your business will change. And so you can never actually achieve stasis. And so you either need to be working on moving forward or you're going to get pulled backwards. It's really that simple. Yeah, I mean, you're either growing or you're dying in business. And it's very, very difficult to stand still for any more than a short period of time. And okay, sometimes in a short period of time, that's okay. Well, it's nice to have a rest. It, yeah, that's a rest and that's yeah. cool. And you should definitely do that. But in the medium to long term, you ain't growing, you're dying. And that's very important to understand. And so that puts a fire under your butt to actually uh, deal with some of those challenges around you know, your concerns about growth. Hmm. I think related to that is the fact that uh, the size of the foundation of a building, you know, determines its strength, and it's the same with your business. You know, if your business is a very small foundation, i.e., has a small number of people, uh, and you want to keep it at that, it's actually not that stable a business. If you think about it, there's a lot of risks. There's a lot of key person risks. There's a lot of key client risks. Uh, if you lose a key person, you're in a lot of trouble. If you've got you know four employees, you lose one. That's twenty five percent of your workforce. If you've got twenty employees and you use one, that's not twenty five percent. It's a lot less. Mm. Uh, and so that that you know what we want to do as we grow our business effectively, what we're doing is we're de risking reliance on key people and key clients and key industries as well, ideally. Uh, and so if you think about it from this perspective, if it's you and your business and you've got let's say seven people in your business, it's, it's you. Maybe you've got yourself out of the field. You're not in. You're in the office now, but you're still running all the jobs and doing the pricing. Or well, let's say if you could get to 25 people, you had an estimator, an operations manager, an office person, and someone who was managing marketing, uh, and and uh, that sort of thing. Now you've got four key people you can rely on. Uh, if one of them goes down, it's not as bad. If heaven forbid you went down. Let's say you had to be out of your business for six months. What would happen at the moment? Now, really, what would actually ask yourself, what would happen? Could this business carry on? And if it can't, you need to grow. Yeah. You have to grow. It's yeah. an insurance policy. Uh, and, and you think about if you couldn't work for six months, what would be the impact on your family and on the financial health of you and your business uh, and, and just the health of your family in general? Uh, so that's really important to understand. And growth gives you that opportunity to build a really – nice wide foundation of a business that can stand on its own two feet. It's not relying on key people. Think about it in terms of business equity value as well. It's going to be worth more your business if you grow it and it's more stable because someone else can run it without you having to be there, which means it's worth more. Think about it from a customer service point of view. Now, I understand as a hands-on business owner, you're like, I'm doing a great job and making sure all the clients are covered. But you get to a certain point and after a certain period of time, you run out of energy, you can't do that. If you have more people you can be more responsive. 
you can get to people when they need you, you know, particularly for response type work or people who need projects done in a timely manner. You can be there more easily if you've got more resources. It actually allows you to provide better processes, better systems, better service. Uh, so there's an upside with that as well. So you really want to think about what is the foundation of my business. If it's not big, then it's a lot of risk, key person risk. Let's build that so we de-risk that so it's solid and reliable for you and your team and your clients. Think about your team. If you went down and there's four people in your business, the other three team members are out of a job. Hmm. If there's 25 people in your business and you've got a good management structure and you're out for six months, they've still got a job. Yeah, Business can actually grow without you. That's amazing. That's why growth is so powerful. Yeah, 100%. And I think like what we're touching on there is really growth uh, done badly versus growth done well. So again, if, if you're not doing growth well, if you're doing it badly, then what this looks like is you're taking on more and more people, more and more jobs, more and more clients. Every single person that you take on is another mouth to feed and another bum to wipe. And the hard thing with that is that it just gets really, really difficult. You can get really stretched. You know, quality can decrease. It can affect your profitability. It can really stuff your time because you're running around trying to wipe all those bums and feed all those mouths. Uh, but the really, really hard thing is that done badly really to me just looks like you haven't built the infrastructure or the foundation underneath, which is what you're talking about before. Whereas on the other hand, if we're growing well, it means that as we're increasing the size of the business, we're also increasing the size of the foundation and the infrastructure below that growth. And what that does, it set you up for success. So if we're thinking about what we teach to our clients, you know, one of the big things that we do uh, dig into is vision. So you know, setting a vision for where you want your business to end up and, and where you want to head in terms of direction. And when we do that, it can provide a lot of clarity about you know, what we're actually trying to build. And it can actually decrease some of the fear because when you start from that vision and you work it back into shorter and shorter and shorter time frames, you start to see that actually this is very achievable. It's not some pie in the sky idea of growth where it's like, I'm just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger forever. It's, it, it's, it's really more of a workable plan uh, towards you know, the ultimate goal, which is time, money and freedom. And I think the, the key is, is that along the journey, you'll get more time and money for sure, sometimes both. But where you get true freedom is when you've grown well and you have that foundation, that infrastructure. Because if you think about a business's core functions, you know, like there's, you need to be able to bring in leads, so opportunities, you need to price them accurately, you need to convert those leads into jobs, you need to execute those jobs well with enough team members and do it, you know, to a good standard, and you need to collect payment for that. Those are the core functions of your business. Now, when those five core functions are able to happen without you, then that's when you get true freedom. So, you know, that's somebody else who can bring leads in, somebody else who can price work, somebody else who can turn those into jobs, you know, close the deals, you know, a whole team of people that can accurately smash the jobs out uh, to a high standard and achieve your margins and a team of people that collect the money and make sure the bills are paid. If all of that can happen without you, that's where the freedom comes from. And I think a lot of the time we, we think we're free when we're smaller because you have a little bit of time or a little bit of money or maybe both and it feels like freedom but it's not. You're actually chained to it. It's, it's the absolute shackles uh, that are around your ankles because the fact is, is like you said, if, if I go away, you know, are any of those core functions affected? Because if any of them you know, rely on me, then I'm not free. I'm absolutely relied on. And not just me, but you know, the whole team, uh, the whole business, my clients, they rely on me too. And that's actually not freedom. It's a burden. Here's the thing. Freedom is not being able to take a holiday for two weeks and having to prepare for a week to set it up and then fix all the mistakes for two weeks when you come back. That is not freedom. Don't get me wrong, it's better than being one person just billing your time out. Absolutely. Got a few, it's better than that. But freedom is taking six months off where your business can grow without you. That's freedom. And even better, you come back and people are like, oh, were you gone? Yeah. I, I didn't realize. It. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, right. That's real freedom. Yeah, that that is freedom. And that's what growing a business gives you when it's done right. Yeah, absolutely. So should we talk about how to do this? Yeah, well, the first thing is... Uh, I reckon you need to hang out with people who are actually doing this. It sounds weird, right? But uh, it's about building your belief muscle. Uh, and so that's one of the things I love about what we do in our Million Dollar Tradie Coaching Program is we have a bunch of successful people who are further down the road who are actually doing this. And new people are, uh, on board can actually look up to those people and say, this is actually a po this is a thing that's possible and doable. And there are actually people who breathe oxygen who are actually doing it. Yeah. Yeah, and they've been where I am, and they've that's right. Done what and they I've done. live in places like I live. You know, they're not like eight feet tall and weigh 150 kgs and full of muscle. They're just normal people. And if we touch on this, it's like you said about the news, right? Like everybody's heard either in the official news or, or you've heard the grapevine news of people that have grown and fallen on their face. 
So when you're in a community of people that you know you've seen them grow and do it successfully, and it's not ruined their businesses, it has made things better. You're seeing that positive light of growth, which doesn't get shown to you elsewhere because that's not sexy to sell. Doesn't sell clicks, buddy. <laughs> no no clicks right. there. Uh, and, and so, it, but it does require us to work on a different set of skills, and that's the key thing. We need a unique set of skills. Yeah, okay, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, you like yeah. that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Didn't quite nail it, but that's okay. Right. Well, it's, you, yeah. know, you get the idea. I yeah. tried hard. Anyway, uh, the first skill is you got to get good at the hiring process. Like you have to dedicate time and energy to learning how to hire well. And, and putting a process in, in your business because key people are the key to success here and great people make all the difference. So that's that's massive. Hiring process and becoming good at that, skilled at hiring is massive. And then it's about how do you build systems and processes that take the business out of your head and get it on paper or into technology so that other people can see how it rolls. And here's the little key to success is if you try and do all the systemizing and, and process flows yourself, that's a nightmare. That's why you hire a team. They do that. They, they will help build those systems for you. Uh, so that's a little little trick there. And then it's you know rigorous financial management is absolutely critical. So being across your numbers, costing your jobs, managing your productivity, monthly profit and loss statements and balance sheets, uh, weekly KPIs and cash flow planning are absolutely critical because then you can see as you grow how it's happening. Because what happens is people grow sometimes, they don't track the financials and all of a sudden they run out of money and they didn't see it happening. That's because they didn't manage it properly. They didn't run the run the numbers. So you run the numbers, you can see how it's happening. You will never get surprised. And if you keep doing it, you know, weekly and monthly, you will see what's happening. You can make changes before anything bad happens. Hmm. That's the key. The next thing is this thing called organization structure. So that's effectively, you may have seen it before, but you get a, a diagram and you sketch out all the positions that you need in your business. You write them up as like a tree diagram. These are all the roles that we need. And then you start hiring to fill them. Hmm. Uh, and the key people to hire are the key managers who will do the heavy lifting. And so that might be your estimator, your operations person, your project managers. Team leaders. Team leaders, all those people. They are the key people who you pour your love into them. Your job becomes about nurturing them, growing them, giving them the skills they need to actually be your key leverage points. Well, they follow that down to the people below them, right? That's I right. I mean, like we are talking earlier about what if someone leaves or they run out of brightness of future or you get pulled back down. I mean, like if you look at our business, I mean – Tony hasn't been involved in much of the hiring for the last couple of years, right? I mean, like people leave or, you know, we bring on new people and stuff and like that just happens in in, in your head anyway. I mean, there, there are definitely our managers are working People just turn up that. here and I'm like, Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Well, well we, we yeah, we take on new staff, and Tony's like, "Who's that guy?" Uh, and 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 like, hey, not look, quite no, it's fair, not like you know. don't get to know them. But I think my point being is like that. That's when you know you've achieved freedom because you know there can be changes in your organization, and that didn't mean a whole bunch of headaches for you, and which is which is that whole thing of the fear in the first place, right? Is I'm going to run into all these difficulties, and it's like, yeah, not like you get to a point where actually a lot of those difficulties are handled by other people. So that, that's really the idea, yeah. right? And, and it becomes a question of rather than how do I do this and how do I fix this, who do I hire to fix this problem or who needs to fix this problem? That's a really important shift. Uh, Dan Sullivan, very famous management writer, has talked a lot about this. And if you ever dig into his work, it's really juicy stuff. But the question is as you grow, who, not how. So who do I need to do that job now? As tradespeople and technicians, we're really good at the how. We're like hands-on people will figure out how to do it. That's the kiss of death to grow a business. If you want to figure out how everything works, you are screwed before you start. You cannot do that. You just can control things and make sure they're on track, but you get someone else to do it. I think that's that's a massive part of success. Mm. And then obviously it's it's appropriate delegation. So giving people uh, jobs that they're, that they're capable of doing, you know, if they're not very skilled, give them a bit more support. If they're highly skilled, just give them the outcome you want them to achieve and let them crack on. Mm. Uh, and then I think something that we do really well here and we talk to our members a lot is we wrap around culture. So your job as the leader is to actually grow the culture of the business. You know, that's coaching your team members, it's doing reviews, it's getting the value set up, it's having rules of the game, it's showing them that you care by actually caring and spending time with them and being concerned about their future. Uh, that's the stuff that will help you grow the business in a really profitable way, in a, a way that gives you great lifestyle as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, uh, you, you've said it many times, but the best way to show you care is to actually care, which uh, <laughs> which does help, guys. Yeah, like, never trust a person who says, hey, I'm a really honest person. That's like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah just, well, just, just be honest. Be and, honest. And people will think that. <laughs> That's right. I, I think there's another thing too. Like, if you think about uh, hell, I've had hell described to me as, you're in hell if you meet the person that you could have been. Mm. Uh, and so... If you meet the person you could have been is like, I could have been the successful business owner who grew a great business, provided lots of employment, great service, 
created wealth for my my family, myself, both time and financial. But I was too scared to do that because I didn't want to grow and I was concerned about growing. You see that person that you, you know, you were small business, small mind, but you could have been this other person. That to me is hell. And so the key here is business growth is a lot about your personal development and your growth as a person, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and sometimes physically as well. It all sort of wraps yeah, yeah. together. And so the cool thing about this is it's challenging you to be a better person. So don't be a scaredy cat. Don't take the low road. Take the high road. Do the hard work and grow yourself as a person to create the business that you deserve and that you can have. And believe in yourself too. I think like if Massive. you're listening to this podcast, like this is not like a you could do this. It's like, no, no, you really, really could. Like this is very, very achievable stuff. It's not made for aliens and Elon Musk. It's, you know, this is people just like you who have been just where you are. And, you know, they've achieved these these amazing things. And like you said earlier, it's something that's really, really cool about the community that, that we work with in the Million Dollar Trader Coaching Program is that, you know, when you when you join that, you see that all these people that are absolutely crushing it, they're doing amazing things, they are just like you, <laughs> just like you. They probably live right next door. They drive, you know, the same car. They've done the same stuff. They eat the same cereal in the morning. You know, like they're, they're just like you and you can do this. And they had the same fears and concerns about growing Absolutely. that you do right now. That's they're the key thing. They're not bulletproof or superhuman or alien. They're just like you in every way. So you can totally do this. So let's land this plane. If you want a life that gives you time, money, and freedom, playing it safe and avoiding growing your business is a tough way to make it happen. Now, in the long run, if you, when you try and protect what you have and you play defense, you often lose that as well. It's better to commit to the process of learning how to grow a business the right way so you can create the business and the life that you want for you and your family. Thanks heaps for listening. We'll catch you all again next time. See you later. Congratulations on being part of a select group of savvy business owners who are taking their businesses to the next level. And to help you on your journey, don't forget to check out our show notes for a copy of our free book, The Profitable Trading, and other valuable resources. Thanks for being a part of this special group and we'll see you in the next episode of The Profitable Trading Podcast.